Hello everyone and welcome back to Solar System Tourism in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul, where I send my Twitch livestream audience to their preferred destination, providing that they pay with the in-stream currency struts, which they earn by watching. We begin with the launch of an alternate Mars lander. This is stock Mars lander number two. We had previously launched a stock Mars lander number one, and I call this stock not because it was all stock parts, but because we were using the Mark 1-3 pod and also a stock fuel tank. You can see the stock fuel tank there. Uh, perhaps you recognize it. So yeah, we have an alternate design for this sort of stock-ish Mars lander. But it is using realism overhaul configured engines, of course, in this case my ED-10 engines, which are methane and oxygen burning engines. Uh, we have launched it on the Kasei rocket, but we have a trick here. We have not fully fueled the transfer stage. In the previous video, we had sent up a methane oxygen depot, and I had decided that we would use said depot. And so the first thing we have to do with this is rendezvous with the depot. Uh, well, actually, the first thing we need to do is uh, deorbit this stage because we have brought it all the way to orbit. It can deorbit it as its own controller, and so that is done. But because we underfueled the transfer stage, we were able to launch the whole assembly with a smaller launcher. Well, because a rocket is big, but it normally would require boosters to uh, launch this fully fueled, so we saved ourselves the boosters. So here we are rendezvousing with the depot, very scenic. And unfortunately, I think this is the only time I actually use the depot, though now that I remember it exists, maybe I should pay attention to it again. And here we are moving off and getting this on its way to Mars as we continue this Mars window. That is a Raptor vacuum engine on the tail. And this is the end of the burn. Fairly simple. Well, so far anyway, there will be complications with this one later on in the video. But we have our transfer and we plot the mid-course adjustment and we will be going through a lot of mid-course adjustments momentarily. And that will remind us what missions we have on the way to Mars. So we will briefly go through them just so that we have them all covered and remind ourselves what we've got going here. This is the Hyde return vessel. Actually Hyde was the name of the launcher that launched it because it was a conglomerate of things. But uh, it sort of adopted name afterwards. So this is the Hyde return vessel and we've got its mid-course adjustment done. Though it's gonna have to have a few more adjustments because it's got ion engines to capture. So it's gotta be a long process. Here is the first stock Mars lander. You can see the Mark 1-3 pod being used here. Uh, though not the stock fuel tank, that's a procedural fuel tank and then the heat shield. This is the second stock Mars lander doing its mid-course adjustment. And that's a little bit heftier. I forget the rationale for the second stock Mars lander. But uh, I guess we decided that we wanted a backup. And you'll notice, and I want you to notice, that that tank currently has uh, very little boil off that has happened. But boil off is happening. So... I make note of that already, and we're going to find out more about that later. Uh, here we have a Aerozine NTO fuel tank, and that is also venturing out to Mars. This will not aero capture, this will use its engines to capture. And here it is doing a mid course adjustment. This is a methane oxygen tank, or depot, or tug, either way, and it too does its mid course adjustment. So those are the missions that we have on the way. And we just use RCS for this one, in this case methane and oxygen RCS. Alright, now that methane and oxygen you can see was very much intact. It's worth noting, because we are going to see some unexpected boil off eventually. Oh, this is the Hammerhead mission. This is carrying CG Matt who wanted to go to Mars. And this is pure ion engines, lots of xenon gas here. And the hammerhead is also on its way. Now this is the Hyde mission again and we're doing another adjustment because we want to minimize how much Delta V we need right in Mars SOI in order to capture. We're doing some pre-burns here outside of Mars SOI to sort of slow down relative to Mars. So that's what we're doing here and then ultimately we get into Mars SOI with this and it starts doing its ion engine burn to capture very early on. 
because it takes a long time. <laughs> so yeah, that's what you see here. And we have to sort of figure out exactly how to aim it so that our periapsis doesn't end up in the atmosphere. Very important. You can see the periapsis changing quite a lot and we have to be careful with that. But we do ultimately get into orbit without any problems. And I plot a rendezvous with Phobos, so that is very optimistic because again, this is going to take some time to bring its orbit down from that high apoapsis down to Phobos's orbit level. And so that will be multiple passes, multiple orbits before we get that done. This is just an inclination adjustment, I think. And then, yeah, it's got a zero-ish inclination with respect to Phobos. But this is bringing the orbit down and it's going to take a few times before we get it down enough so that we can actually rendezvous with Phobos. That is how ion engines are. But ultimately we do get down to a decent level and we are on our last burn to rendezvous. And we have a nice close approach distance and we meet up with Phobos and of course our Phobos station. So that is what we have targeted there. And we still use the ion engines in order to do the rest of the rendezvous because actually orbits around Phobos are really slow. So. Yep, not a big problem using ions, really. Uh, well, I mean, we have very powerful ions and we have a lot of them. Now we needed a docking berth, so we moved off this uh, basically spent container of supplies. It's still got some water in, but we removed that and so we have a docking berth for this hide vessel, but uh, it, the location is such that we now have a very, very, very long station. It's uh, long in one axis in particular, so sort of interesting like that. It was very hard to dock this, by the way. And so, yeah, I had to take multiple tries to approach correctly here. We were always sort of at a little bit of an angle. There was lots of backing off and trying again. And there we go. So yeah, you can see it's really long in one direction, but well, that's how it is. Next up, we take a little break from our Mars missions because this is actually the next stream. And I decided to check in on the Ganymede lander that we had sent with Pekka and Synonym Toast Crunch. And mainly because its water seemed to be a little bit low, we needed to update its water recycling situation since so it's got a water recycler right there. Uh, but it's not a perfect water recycler, there is some loss to it. And we have to take that into account. So I was trying to figure out if it was going to arrive at the Jupiter system in time. It seemed that way, but it's going to obviously have to rendezvous with some supplies pretty darn quickly. And we can't focus in on it. I followed along with it as long as possible. But yeah, we have to turn to other things. Here's that second stock Mars lander. And it turns out that I had put it on the wrong node. So it can't separate from the Raptor stage. And so the inflatable heat shield cannot inflate. And we're not pulling away. That is a big problem, obviously. If we had a Kerbal in, we could have the Kerbal destruct the previous stage. but. We don't, and that's not our only problem. You can see we have had substantial boil off of oxygen suddenly, even though that was not there during the mid-course adjustment, right? Uh, but, and it is only the oxygen, uh, even though oxygen and methane, they're, they're not exactly the same boiling point, but they're close. So there should have been some methane boil off, but it was just the oxygen leaving us with a huge imbalance in those tanks, even though there wasn't much boil off at the previous check. So, and there won't be much boil off of the other missions. So I was irritated. So yeah, that's the problem with the stock Mars Lander 2. This is the stock Mars Lander 1, and this is coming in. It is in Mars SOI right now. We're just making sure that its periapsis is going to be okay. Now, of course, it has to hit the Martian atmosphere at a particular periapsis in order to capture. And so we're adjusting that. It seems fine enough, but it's going to need to rendezvous with some Kerbals if it's going to do a landing, and who knows if it's safe or not. Next up was an adjustment with the Aerozine NTO tank, and we can see it will take 1,229 of its own Delta V in order to capture. But while that's going in, we have to focus on this. 
which I needed to raise the a periapsis of because its periapsis was way too low and this is coming in first. But basically it's a derelict now. Basically we're disposing of it since it doesn't have enough delta V to do its job without the oxygen. But for some reason I decided to rearrange deck chairs on the Titanic and move the oxygen we do have up to the top tank in the hope that it would survive. I mean, potentially we could try and refuel it, top it off and then try and land it, I guess, but it's still looking pretty dire, especially with things blowing up randomly behind us. Can we inflate that heat shield now? I think it's pro it's too late. <laughs> we've we've lost connection to it. Uh it's all it's all bad there. And we are stuck with the sound from Ship Manifest. Uh, that sound just won't stop. So that's adding insult to injury right there. Oh, and there is the fact that I decided to spin around not to the heat shield side, but to the nose first side. You would think that the aerodynamics would favor going on the heat shield side, but well, we lose everything anyway, including the heat shield. There is a static heat shield there as well, aside from the inflatable one. So, this is, yeah, well, like I said, derelict, and actually a derelict instead of a complete explosion because it captures around Mars, and uh, it actually escapes Mars' atmosphere, so we will ultimately have to get rid of it in the tracking station. There's really nothing we can do with this, and it continues that ship manifest sound, alas. But anyway, here is Stock Mars Lander 1, and this could potentially be useful. It does have less methane and oxygen, though I forget, and uh, the differential must be because of boil off, the oxygen has boil off more, but it's not as severe as the other one, so we could do a better job of topping this off, perhaps with that methane and oxygen fuel tank that we've got coming in. So, in fact, I think the methane oxygen fuel tank was partly so that we could refuel these landers. Anyway, it captured and we needed to plot a little apoapsis burn in order to make sure the periapsis wasn't still in the atmosphere so that it would stay in orbit. And we'll get back to that later. While it's going up to apoapsis, we have to deal with the Arizine NTO tank coming in. And so it has captured around Mars. No worries about the atmosphere there, it didn't need to aero capture. And then here is the stock Mars Lander 1 making its adjustment burn. And so it is safely in orbit now. And I had to get rid of all the debris from stock Mars Lander 2. Lots and lots of debris ended up still in flight and not eliminated. Um, I don't know why, but yeah, that took a while. And, of course, another ap apoapsis burn, and I think maybe an adjustment burn for rendezvous for the Arizine NTO tank. And here's that methane oxygen tank coming in. It too will just use its own engines to capture. Because we took our time to arrive at Mars, uh, the capture doesn't take too much. It's just 1,200 as you can see. One of the benefits of just taking your time to arrive. Uh, with cargo, obviously, that's the best thing. There's no need to have it come in in six months or anything like that. Usually nine months to a year and you'll get a nice, easy capture instead of a hard one. And again, boosting up our periapsis up to Phobos level, probably. And this is the hammerhead. It is making some pre- ion engine burns in the solar space in order to make sure that once we get into Mars SOI it's not going too fast and so that capture will be easy and so you can see we've got that and we need to we can't do the entire burn right now because we've got other things to turn to which are trying to rendezvous with stuff like this here's the NTO tank so we have to do a little bit of ion engine burn then turn back to these then go back to it and I'm skipping most of that, I just wanted to show one of those iterations. Uh, but yeah, this is doing more of its ion engine burn to 
eventually capture on Mars and then it finally arrives. But there was a little bit of jumping back and forth between things that I've skipped. So here is the capture of the hammerhead, which is like missing one solar panel up front and it's got some issues there, but it's not as bad as some of the other things that we sent during this window. One issue was that you can see I've put these Gemini, Gemini lander engines here uh, in order to help us capture so that we can do that quickly. Unfortunately, of course, I did not put high pressure tanks, so they don't have enough pressure. Uh, I take a little bit of time to realize that, but yeah feed pressure too low. So we had to do it all with the ion engines. It was only plotted as a 100 uh, meter per second burn, but it took us like forever to do that 100 meters per second because ion engines, so. But yeah, we were like on our way out from periapsis a long ways before we actually captured, but we did capture. And here I am plotting to eventually meet up with Phobos. Though we're getting a whole lot of stuff around Phobos, and maybe we don't need everything at Phobos, really. But after that, I decided to turn to some experimental explorations. Uh, here we have the Orion Carrier Planes, uh, most famous from my To Mars and Beyond series. And I was trying to put them in symmetry, and you notice the procedural wings tend to do this thing when you try and put them in uh, symmetry. They sort of flip things in an inconvenient way. That ultimately led me to making the custom wings for the Orion carrier plane so that I could put them in symmetry without having to deal with that every time. And yeah, there we had four of them around a nuclear stage and then Pekka wanted a Raptor vacuum stage and so I put two of them on a Raptor vacuum. So this is like an alternate sort of super heavy thing-ish. Kinda? I mean, because the Orion carrier planes use nine Raptor sea level engines in total. Uh, but because of the density of methane and oxygen, we needed to put more engines on the core just so that it looked right. And so I put sea level and vacuum engines on the core and tried to see what kind of payload we would get out of it. But we didn't test that during this particular stream. So we will set that aside for some other time. I forget I've, if I've made a YouTube video about it or not. I may have. But anyway, with that, as we ponder this ponderous rocket, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.